my name is Michaela Burns and today I'll be talking to you guys about waterworks. Waterworks is the direct and indirect usage of water and how that contributes to the environment. Now when you think of direct and indirect water usage, you would think of, you know, how I use water and then how everyone else uses water, but that's not necessarily the case. You're correct when you assume that direct means just yourself, or you know, maybe those around you, but indirect still involves what you do, but just on a larger scale. Indirect water usage is involved with farming and factories and everything they do that uses water to benefit the consumer, which is us. You know, when farmers use water for agriculture to create crops, and keep them growing and healthy so they can end up in the grocery stores, that is for us. We eat that food and it keeps going and it's a cycle. And that is indirect water usage. And we all have to partake in that. Now, we can take, we can partake in that in varying amounts. You know, we can over consume or under consume or just do it enough. I want you guys to think of one way that you directly and indirectly use water, but through an illustration. So on either a note card or a half sheet piece of paper, I would like you to on one side do direct and the other side indirect. And you'll have about two minutes for each side and you will draw a picture using pens, pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you have around you to draw an example of how you might use water and then how on a larger scale water is used. And we can pause for just a moment. And then now that you guys are back, my example for direct water usage was a stick figure taking a bubble bath, my masterpiece work of art that looks like a cyclops. But that is one way that we do directly use water every day. And then for indirect usage, I don't know what you guys had, but I did how paper is made, but in a very simplistic way. I assume it is way more complicated than I can even imagine to make, you know, paper. But I did a tree going through Let's see, water and then wood to use to make paper. And that is how far I got with that lovely illustration. And then with indirect water usage, there's so many ways that it interconnects with our society because I mainly talk about food, but it goes into so much other things, you know. Water is used to even make technology, but when you think of electricity and water, you would think those don't go together, that creates a disaster. But in reality, water is used to help create everything. It's used to create cell phones, tablets, computers, and you know everything that we use in the classroom. What I'm recording with right now had to have water used for it in the factory to help produce it. It's used for steel producing, mining to get the steel. Um, fire departments use it when they put out fires. Large fisheries use it. Cattle ranching uses it to get food for us. Restaurants are a major contributor to water consumption. With the thousands, millions of restaurants there are around the world, they use an insane amount of water. Coal power plants are also a large contributor. Coal power plants and other types of, like nuclear and other types of power plants, they have so many other issues that they contribute to the environment, but they also do use water, which is another thing. And none of this is necessarily bad. You know, we, we need to use water to get resources to keep the whole world going smoothly. However, how that water goes back out is also an issue that is often ignored. You know, you hear about, you know, pollution ending up in the ocean with water bottles and straws and how that affects the wildlife. And that does partake in it. But 
it's also about, you know, the small things we can't see with that bacteria and microorganisms being affected through pollution from companies when they just put that water back out rather than, you know, recycling it and reusing it over and over because there's only so much water. If we have the water that we have to use and due to oil spills and other environmental disasters, that contaminates what water we do have for just our own drinking supply. And thankfully there's water cleaning plants underground that we never see that clean our water here in the cities and in the states. So we have healthy drinking water for all of us to drink every day that we never think about, you know, we just fill up our cup and drink it and it never phases us. We never think about what actually goes into that and how in some places the circumstances aren't great where people don't have clean drinking water due to contaminants and pollution and they don't have what we have to get around that and not have to think about it. And another activity that I wanted to do was a diagram showing how all of it's interconnected. So I have here for this basic one is a source of water here in the middle. And then there's steel power, restaurants, cattle ranching, coal power, fishing, mining, fire departments, and soft drinks and because all of that can be interconnected with water they all use water and so when you make this chart which will only take you a minute i want you to next with different colors show how all of these are connected to each other and not just water how can you connect fishing to cattle ranching or you know, restaurants, coal mining. Think of ways that you can connect them and you'll have a couple of minutes to do this after you draw the diagram. You can have about two minutes to draw the diagram and then three to four minutes to connect different plot points and we can take a pause. And then for the finished result, the new and improved, that looks way better and larger is, you know, the same water, fishing, coal power plants, cattle ranching, restaurants, steel manufacturing, soft drinks, fire department, and mining, how they all are interconnected with each other. And this is just a basic example. You can go way more in depth and zigzag them everywhere if you can think of a way that they are connected. What I did was connecting cattle ranching with fishing due to, you know, those being how we get meats and then the water consumption used to do those and then connected it to restaurants. Because, you know, when you get fish at a restaurant or, you know, steak or chicken, whatever you get, that goes to a restaurant. And then you could also connect soft drinks to the restaurant because they'd have, you have to have soft drinks when you go out, you know, get your Pepsi or your root beer, whatever you like to drink at the restaurant that involves water to make those cans, to make the soda, and then to get to the restaurant. And then for the steel pr production, that would go with mining and the fire department. So those would connect due to the fact that you'd have to mine to get the steel and then that'd have to be made in the factory. But then steel production honestly can go full circle due to the fact that, you know, when you think of steel that makes support beams or, you know, mining tools, um, things for restaurants, stoves, it makes cars to get around. Steel pretty much goes into everything that contains, you know, metal that needs to last a long time. It's a great building material and you don't have to do a whole lot of maintenance on it. So with buildings, you know, it builds the restaurants, it builds where the cattle would be held, it builds the coal power plant. Um, fishing, it could be used for the boats, for the mining, the tools, for the fire department to help make the trucks, to make fire hydrants and hoses. For soft drinks, it's what builds the company. Soda cans are obviously not made out of steel, but let's see. And then even the steel production plant would be made out of steel. So that would all connect. 
The fire department obviously is a whole separate thing. You can tell that fire department would obviously use so much water just to fight fires, especially with the giant forest fires that have been going on. So much water has to be used to put out those fires and nothing could ever really be done about that. Besides, you know, it going back into the environment and the water cycle repeating itself. And I'm hoping that this lesson so far has helped you guys understand what it really means to use water directly and indirectly. There's a lot that we can do on large and small scales to limit our water consumption, or how we consume it rather, so it can be recycled and cleaned easier. You know, when you let the sink run forever, you can turn it off in between, or, you know, water irrigation plants if those are more common in your area, that also helps recycle your water. Which sounds gross, but it's done in such a good way that you would never notice it's already been going on. It's how we get, you know, water from the tap. Obviously not water bottles, but all of that can help reduce the water consumptions indirectly and directly. And with companies, that seems like the harder battle but supporting businesses that actually care about the environment makes such a huge difference. Would you rather support a company that's like, hey, we'll stop using straws and instead maybe make them out of recyclable materials that biodegrade faster rather than just sitting out and, you know, taking hundreds or thousands or millions of years to rot and go back into the earth? Or, you know, we can support companies that just don't care. They'll make anything out of whatever as long as it makes them a lot of money. Supporting companies that want to help the planet makes it easier for us, for our kids, for our grandkids. It just, it helps us be a better and productive society knowing that our resources won't run out. Because you only get so much water and we have to take care of what we do have. A lot of water has already been sabotaged due to oil spills, but someday, with our generation, you know, we could make ways that we can fix and clean the water that we do have. We can improve on a large scale someday our water irrigation systems and make them better and more able to filter more water and faster, help bring that to other countries so we can improve their water. There's so much that we can do besides just what, you know, you and I can do. But someday, you know, when people work for those businesses and they produce ideas that could be used someday, you could produce the next idea to help, you know, factories be more eco-friendly or businesses. Farmers, you could help farmers help with their water consumption and with their agriculture and how they water crops and make it more efficient, especially with places that go through droughts often and crops die. There's so much that we can do and I am happy that I was able to tell you guys about how we affect water usage, whether you know it's in ways that we think about or more of an out of sign, out of mind. For the last thing I want to do is to present a really fun end game activity for you guys. It is on the discoverwater.org website and it's we all use water and it talks directly about in realistic scenarios such as you know just being at home or out playing outside how we use water and affect it. See I have it pulled up right here if it will show since I don't have it on my computer. And then you would click, you know, play audio or play video. And you would click water use activity that was on right on this side with that little dog. And it'll keep playing and you would click start after you read the instructions. And it wants you to look for everyday uses of water. You'll click an object in the picture it presents to you and then click at the bottom in the little squares how it is using that water. If it's using it through urban ways or agriculture, recreation, 
fish or wildlife, energy, navigation, industry, or earth systems are the options you'll presented, and you can pick multiple or just one. And then it'll go in an order in different scenarios, and you can start off with, you know, waking up in the morning and things that are just in your room and how that uses water consumption. And it tells you right there on how to play if you need to reread. And then you can click, you know, the light bulb that's right up here. And it'll ask you to pick ones that affect, you know, how the light works. And for that, you would pick, I would pick energy, yes. It'll ding if you're correct, or industry at the factories. And then, let's see. Yep, I got one wrong. So then once you're done, it'll have you click another thing, such as being in bed. And then you'll just continue that for each scenario, as long as your instructor allows, if you wanna play through all of it or just one or two activities. Thank you guys for letting me present this lesson to you and I hope that you learned a lot today about how you can help the environment even if it's just through water consumption or any other ways. Thank you.